In this video, I'll introduce a modified version of the logistic equation called the logistic equation with harvest. I'll use this model to show uh, an example of a bifurcation and we'll construct a bifurcation diagram, a really important type of diagram in the study of all sorts of dynamical systems. The, the way I'll do this um, might seem a little bit uh, slow or involved, the bifurcation diagram is a bit abstract, and so I think building it up step by step kind of carefully is really helpful for getting an understanding of what it means. So I'll be presenting things perhaps a little slower than seems necessary, but my experience has been that doing so really helps when it comes time to put all this together and look at the bifurcation diagram. Okay, so here is the logistic equation with harvest. Without this h term, this is the regular logistic equation. R is the growth rate and K is the carrying capacity. And I'm going to sub add another parameter h, which we can interpret as the harvest rate. So um, for concreteness, I'll think of, uh, that we're modeling some uh, fisheries, fisheries in a lake or a bay or something. And h is the rate at which we catch fish. And um, h here is would just be a number, like a number of fish. So um, a, a manager might set H at 50. We can catch 50 fish a year, or 100 fish, or three fish. Notice that these terms here are density dependent. The growth rate depends on the numbers of fish that are present, P. The H term, how many we harvest or catch, does not depend on the number of fish that are present. That's maybe not an entirely um, accurate view of things, but maybe for some fish that are dumb or slow or easy to catch, um, you can catch them without um, independent, you can catch them equally well independent of how many uh, there are. And as you probably guessed, this is a model to not take too seriously. Um, I don't think anybody thinks fisheries are really, really described by this, but it's a model that'll help us think through some trade-offs and ideas. And I'll talk more about kind of how we can generalize from this model um, towards the end of this video or in the next one. Okay, so we've got logistic equation with harvest. And what I'm gonna do is analyze the logistic equation using qualitative techniques for different values of H. And the first value I'm gonna do will be a little bit boring or redundant because I've already looked at this. And so this is the case where H is zero. So this means we aren't harvesting any fish at all. And um, this is the, the same number as I plugged in before. So picture is the same. We will have, if the population is in here, it's increasing. If the population is above 100, it's decreasing. So we have a stable fixed point at 100 and an unstable fixed point at zero. So I'll draw the phase line for that. Here it is. There's a fixed point. There's a fixed point. And I'm going to use a scale that's designed to sort of line up with what's on this. And I'll make a note to myself that this was the case when h is zero. Oh, and I should put a few more arrows on. Okay, so this is just what we did in the last video. Stable fixed point at 100, unstable fixed point at zero. And this is the case where we aren't harvesting any fish at all. All right. So now we've analyzed it for h equals zero. I'm going to do the same thing, but for a different value of h. So here is h equals 40. So let me just say a little bit about this before we do the phase line. The effect of this h term, just geometrically, when you subtract a constant from a function, it moves it down um, vertically. So it's not really going to... Well, yeah, okay. All right, so here, this is the graph with h equals zero. h equals 40, I just subtract 40 from it. So if I just took this and shifted it down by 40, I would get this curve. So here's the curve, and let's see what the dynamics are now. What are there, what fixed points are there? What are their stability? So now we have positive growth if we're in between this number and this number. So in between here, the fish increase. If I'm greater, if the number of fish is greater than, I don't know, 83, 84, 
the number of fish will decrease, move this way. And now if I'm less than say 17 or 18 fish, then I'll move towards zero and then negative infinity. So um, if we start say with 15 fish, that's bad news for the fish because they'll all die out. So let me draw the phase line for this situation. Here's my line. And I have a fixed point there, fixed point there. In between these two fixed points, the population increases, above it decreases, and so on. And this is h equals 40. Um, note, by the way, that the steady population you might think, okay, the steady population, the carrying capacity used to be 100, and now if I harvest 40 a year, presumably that would move it down to 60. And it doesn't quite work that way because this has a pretty large growth rate. So yes, you're harvesting, but they're also growing, uh, sort of growing back part of the way towards the 100, which is what it would want to be, what the population would go to if H wasn't here. So now the new steady state for this fishery would be um, 82, 83. But note also that there's a critical number of fish, and if you get underneath this population, um, the population will die off, and it'll go down to zero. Okay, so not surprising. I don't really know anything at all about fish, but this seems like a not crazy story to tell about fish. Okay, so that's h equals 40. Now I'm going to try another h value. So this is h equals 65. Again, notice that as h gets larger, this curve, it's an upside down parabola, moves down, uh, down the, the axis. So now this has moved another 25 down and it's just kind of barely peaking up above this axis. So now we're harvesting a lot of fish a year. Um, we have 100, the, the steady state, the carrying capacity is 100. We're harvesting 65 a year. We might think, oh, is that too many? Is that gonna make the fish die off? Well, let's see. Um, we do have a region of growth in here. If we're between these two values, the growth rate, that's on the y-axis, is positive. So the population will increase till around a little less than 70. If we're above this value, it'll decrease and stop at 70. And if we're uh, to the left of here, it will, it will decrease towards zero. The fish will die. So let's draw the phase line for this. There's my line, and now I have a fixed point here and there. Remember, fixed points occur when the growth rate is zero, so here and here. In between these two points, the population grows. To the right, the population decreases, moves to the left. And if I'm underneath, if I'm below this value a little more than 30, the fish die off. Bad news for the fish. Okay, and this was, I'll make a note to myself, h equals 65. So that's the phase line for this differential equation with h equals 65. All right, I'll do two more um, h values. Next, we'll do h equals 75. And this is an interesting one. Now the curve has been lowered enough, I'm subtracting enough fish every year, that it just barely touches this point here. So what might the phase line look for this, look like for this? And I'll draw the line in. Well now, there on, there's only one fixed point. It occurs right here in the middle when we have 50 fish, a population of 50. If I'm above this, I decrease. And if I'm below this, I decrease. So this fixed point is sort of an odd case, one we haven't encountered much before. I think there was one intermediate homework problem on this. You'll call it semi-stable, perhaps, um, because if you, you move away here, you have a lot of fish, you'll decrease to this, you'll get closer to this fixed point. 
but if you're a little bit less, you have too few fish, you're below 50, you're at 49, the fish will start to die, the population decreases. So the population is always decreasing, except it happens to hold steady at this one sort of single point. Okay, so that's h equals 75. I have a nice phase line for that. And one more. <clears throat> Maybe you can guess what's about to happen. Now h will be 85. So I'm harvesting 85 fish a year. And this is enough of a harvest rate that the parabola is now completely below the um, x-axis. That means that the growth rate is always negative. So no matter what the population is, it's decreasing towards zero and I guess mathematically towards negative infinity. So this is really bad news for the fish. So I can draw this phase line. I put no dots on this phase line be because there are no fixed points, no equilibrium points, just arrows indicating that no matter what the population is, it's always decreasing. And I'll make a note that this h value, the parameter h, is 85. Okay, so we looked at this differential equation, and I varied this parameter h, and we looked at five different values. And we saw different behaviors. Most of the time, there were two fixed points. Here, there was the special case, there was one fixed point, And here, there were zero fixed points. And this makes sense, I think, from the point of view of the fish and the fishermen or fisher folk, in that um, as you harvest more and more fish, the fish population declines. Eventually, you're harvesting so many fish that uh, the fish population goes to zero. So um, this way of looking at things is we're analyzing the equation one parameter at a time. I print out an h value, I tell you an h value, and hopefully now it's not too hard to come up with a phase line for this. Um, what a bifurcation diagram will give us is a way of picturing um, all the possible behaviors of this equation for all possible values of h all at once. It's a nice geometric construction that you can get a lot of information out of. So that'll be the topic of the next video.